with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free and I'm happy to be in truth and I will daily lift my hands for I will always sing of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 And oh, I feel like dancing It's foolishness, I know When the world has seen the light, we'll dance with joy like the dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Thank you for that, Ryan. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship, you faithful remnant, on such a gray and cold. I feel like I'm in home. We are glad you are here with us today. Just a few, actually more than a few announcements. There's a lot going on, and we are excited about it. You might notice something different about this room. Most of it was repainted this week. Not purple or pink, a shade warmer than we normally have. For a couple of weeks, we're going to have uh, some drywall repairs visible as we just kind of spruce the place up and, and repair some, some well-worn issues on the walls and get this place set and ready for the next 20 years of the life of the congregation. So we celebrate and we thank uh, Jeff and Carla Kessler who are family of this church, the, the son-in-law and daughter of Nancy Ermager, as they've done this amazing work for us on pretty short time frames. So they are to be commended. We are in phase two of our reopening plan. Everybody's got a plan. Everything is in phases. You might be in phase one of waking up today. Good for you. Phase two means very simply, nothing changes on Sunday Nothing changes with the office, but we are allowing outside groups to meet in the building during the week. So we've got committees and ministry teams that are now using the building on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Our Cub Scout troop, our Boy Scout troops are coming back. So we're glad that we have a space that is safe, that's accessible, and it allows us to be confident about hosting different ministries for this community. We have um, continued as we have hosted a, a workout group hosted by a son of this congregation, Travis Perkins. We have been looking for the, the sweet spot of times for this exercise group as we've been listening to the different people in our community who've been wanting to attend. Now, I've got some times on here, and mom, correct me if I'm wrong, we've got 5.30 for the seniors group. And we have 6 p.m. for the high-intensity interval training. This is the first week where I've gotten those dates right. So there we go. So if the weather continues to not look as gorgeous as it does right now, those will not be hosted outside. Those will be hosted in a socially distanced manner in our fellowship hall. So we invite you to come. If you sign up before, great. If not, perfect. Show up. You can sign up. And it is a wonderful time together. We are uh, going big this month at the end of October. 
October 25th is going to be our youth breakfast for all of our little minions and nuggets. It is also going to be our youth Sunday where we are honoring our kids and our children's ministry and celebrating the things that God does in our hearts through our children. We are also going to be blessed to baptize three brassards on that Sunday, all three of them, Christian, CJ, and Charles, who I just perpetually want to call Chuck, but I don't have permission yet, so Chuck, let's, let's do some work together and, and see if we can make that happen. But no, we are uh, excited on the 25th to have this big, tremendous celebration of our kids in the life of this congregation. You may have seen a cartoon size basket in the narthex. I have been told as a Floridian, we don't have words like this, it's called a Longaburger basket. It, it, it looks more like a sailboat than something that you would carry around. But we put that basket because every fall, we collect unused hats, mittens, scarves, socks, any warm gear to support a ministry that we love dearly in Lafayette that serves the homeless in our communities. So I invite you, if you're clearing out your closet and you've got some cold weather hoodies or beanies or anything that you want to donate, Bring them to church this month, and we're going to donate them so that we can keep people warm this winter season. We are also hosting something kind of new this year. Because of COVID, and every day seems like a new adventure, and we have no idea where we're going to look and where we're going to be at the end of the month in Halloween, our church is hosting a community-wide trunk or treat event. And what that means is we, it, it kind of looks like we're tailgating for Halloween, to be totally honest with you. You pull your cars up, and we have a sign-up sheet in the Narthex. We encourage you to sign up. There's a few open spaces still. Um, and what we do is we pull our cars up, back them up, we open the trunks, literally, and we hand out treats. It's, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're allowed to decorate it. You don't have to have a Maserati or a Camaro. You can just bring your hoopty like I've got. Whatever you've got, if you've got a truck bed, bring it so that we can celebrate Halloween and support our families in a safe way, in an accessible way that makes sure that our parents are confident and our kids still get to enjoy the beginning of the holiday season. So come and join us for that wonderful event. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. on the 31st. I also have a note here from Miss Susan, our Director of Children's Ministries, that we are looking for round pine cones. Very specific, round, chubby pine cones. So if you've got pine trees, we are looking to steal your pine cones from you in a very gracious Christian way because we are going to turn them into Christmas trees, I believe, for this coming season. So as we're getting ready for all the crafts and the nativity play and all the amazing stuff coming up this holiday season, if you've got round pine cones or if you are bold enough to steal some from your neighbor, just kidding, but if you know where we can find some round pine cones, we would greatly appreciate it and let uh, Miss Susan and Terry know. Last we are excited, especially this year, with, with all of the, the loss, specifically around holidays. You know, we didn't get to experience Easter the way that we normally do. And one of the ways that we experience Christmas is through the Christmas shoebox ministry. And our sister Jan Sandos and her wonderful husband, Louis, have volunteered to lead a churchwide effort to start that ministry. So we are going to launch this month of October, and I believe they are, need to be finished by the middle of November. Am I correct, Jan? The 15th of November. So we're going to launch this. You're going to see more information in the Narthex. We're going to keep sharing it with you online. I invite you to share uh, these gifts with kids all across the globe who, just like you, have actually been quarantined and sheltered at home, whether they're in Guatemala or Nicaragua or Paris. All over the globe, we've been... Ex Experiencing this crisis together. So let's experience Christmas and the joy of that holiday together. With that, I invite you to take a few moments and forget everything that I just said. One of the things that is hard to remember, because we have a lot of moving parts, we have a wonderful camera person and a piano person, is that this is the one place in our entire week Sometimes the one place over the landscape of our lives that is not designed to be more work. 
It's designed by God to be restful, to be a breath of fresh air, to be rejuvenating, not the low point, but the climax of our weeks. So I invite you to center yourselves in the presence of God, to breathe in the goodness that the Holy Spirit has prepared for you today and to receive what Jesus is going to say. Amen. now draw near to God who is always closer to us than the breath that is on our lips. In full assurance of knowing that he's not going to smite us, he's not some big judgmental figure, but he is a close and personal confidant, our Lord, our God, our friend. Let us confess our sins before God and one another, saying together, Lord, it has been a long week. Out of fatigue and frustration, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another. We have been quick to throw up our hands and give up when things don't work out. We have withheld care and compassion from ourselves when we needed it most. We have dehumanized others with labels and slurs 
all while forgetting that we are just as broken and equally to blame. Jesus, let your mercy roll down upon us like the rush of mighty waters and fill us to overflowing. We confess these to you and continue now in the silence of our hearts. Amen. One of the most famous parts of all scripture that most people know, even if they've never cracked open a Bible, they've seen it in movies all the time. The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. One of the parts that strikes me most about that passage is towards the very end. He prepares a table before me in the middle, in the midst of my dark times, of my enemies. That's what he loves to do. Today we are going to celebrate the sacrament of communion, but before we do so, receive the greatest gift of all, the gift of forgiveness in the middle of your brokenness, in the middle of dark, rainy days. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear and believe the best news in the entire globe that has changed history forever. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and set free. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand as we pray a prayer of praise to our God? Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Come, let us praise the living God, joyfully sing to our Savior. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Now as those who are defined by goodness, by grace, by kindness, I invite you to swivel and swerve and share that with someone this morning. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Peace be with all of you who are joining us at home. It's now at this time I'd like to invite the kids to come forward Because I've got a story to tell you guys. Good morning. Hello, hello. All right. We've got cousins. We've got siblings. What could go wrong? Good morning. Good morning. Hello. What's up, man? Good to see you guys. How we doing? Good to see you. Would you guys come and sit up here on the very tippy top of the steps? That's where all the cool kids sit. And everybody sits up there, so that means you're all cool. So, good morning. Hello, skippity doo dog. Good to see you both. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Oh, good morning, friends. It is so good to see you all. So, my name is Mike. I think all of us know each other, and we have met before. And today, I have a story. So, okay, there was a whole big group of people. And they were camping together. Most of them didn't like it, but they got used to it. Some days were awesome, and some days were like today, just gross outside. And these people were camping, exactly, and they had a great idea. They said, you know what? Let's have a party. Let's have a big party. Let's throw the biggest party we have ever had, ever. And someone said, well, what, what are we celebrating? Because you have to celebrate something. You can't just have a party for the sake of partying. you got to do it for some reason. And the people said, I have a great idea. We are going to celebrate freedom. 
We're going to celebrate freedom. It sounds just like America, right? We are going to celebrate being free. We are going to be free from God. We're going to be free from rules. We're going to be free from someone telling us what to do. We're going to do whatever we want, and it's going to be awesome. So they start playing the drums, and they crank up the music, and everyone has fun, and Ryan plays the piano, and there's food, and there's dancing, and it's amazing, and then (gasps) all of a sudden, one of their parents show up. It was a guy named Moses, and Moses' face was about the color of this carpet. It was beat red, and he was mad. He was so, so mad. Not because they were having fun, because what's wrong with that? But because they were having fun at the expense of God. Because they were having fun breaking the rules and not caring. They were having fun being free from the people who loved them to death and back again. And so Moses punishes them. He says, nah, not okay. It's okay to have a party. It's okay to be happy and to have fun. But it's not okay to think that being away from God is freedom. You guys are wearing face masks right now. Are any of you just sick of it? Are any of you just so tired of it? Yeah. You go to school, and school is different. You go to the grocery store, you go to the mall, you go to someone's birthday party, you hang out with your grandparents, and it's different. And we just want sometimes to be free. We just want to be done with it. But Moses teaches us something that very mature people, people who have Jesus in their hearts, understand. That for us, freedom doesn't look like being away from Jesus. Freedom looks like being closer and closer and closer. Sometimes things happen that we don't understand, and there are rules and regulations. And Jesus tells us to trust him. Even if we don't like it, even if it's annoying, he's working for our good. He's trying to help. So celebrate, so party, have a good time, and be free with Jesus. Amen. All right, so normally what we do is we stand up and we hold hands and pray, but we can't do that because COVID. So let's bow our heads, fold our hands, close our eyes, and we will pray. God, it is rainy, and we thank you for sleepy mornings. We thank you for family, for friends, for you. We thank you for calling us to be a people of freedom. And that looks like following you. That looks like devoting our entire lives to you. Sometimes we get it twisted and think that that means doing whatever we want. We're sorry. We made a mistake. But we know and trust that even in our mistakes, you're doing something amazing to bless us and draw us nearer to you. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may go back to your seats or go to Kids Church. Brother, would you help me light a candle real quick? Would that be cool? Awesome. Here you go. If you would stand on the other side of the communion table. Remind, remind me your name once more. Fritz. We've, we've hung out before. Absolutely. So, Fritz, if you would light that little candle with that wick. Yep. And then take that and light this big candle. This big candle is a big deal here. It's a big deal everywhere. It's called the Christ candle. And as you light this, you're doing something really important for us. You're reminding us that God is in this room right now. You're revealing to us a deeper truth that in the warmth of these lights, in the warmth of this candle, we have a God that loves us deeply. And shines lights in the darkest of places. And so as we light this candle, we center ourselves in the presence of God. And we acknowledge that he is here. 
And he's going to say something to us right now. Very good. And nothing burned. Good job. You may take your seat. Thanks, Fritz. Thanks, man. As Fritz has helped us to get in the zone of listening to what God's going to say to us today, let's take a moment right now to intentionally invite God into the space of our hearts to speak to us through the prayer that we normally sing. It's called, Speak, O Lord. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Amen. The scripture passage that comes to us today is taken from the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus. It's the 32nd chapter, and it starts with The 15th verse. So hear these words. Then Moses turned and went down the mountain. And he was carrying two tablets of the covenant in his hands. Tablets that were written on both sides, on the front and the back. And these tablets were the work of of God. And the writing was the writing of God, and it was engraved on the tablets. But when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted and partied, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But Moses said, No. Nah. That's not the sound made by victors or the sound made by losers. That's the sound of revelers that I hear. So as soon as Moses came near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing, and his anger burned hot. And he threw the tablets from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and he burned it with fire and ground it to a powder. He scattered it on the water and he made the Israelites drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you've brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Hey, don't let your anger burn hot. You know the people, that they are bent on evil. So they said to me, make us gods who shall go before us. As for Moses, the man who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know where he's come from. We don't know what has become of him. So I said to them, okay, whoever has gold, take it off. So they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and boop, out came This calf, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So one fall break during my sophomore year of college, I came back home to St. Petersburg, Florida, where my parents lived. And I was living in Orlando at the time. And I came back for a long weekend just to spend time with my friends and family. And one night, my dad and I kind of took a guy's night, and we went out to dinner just to catch up. We're pretty close. And so my sister, my younger sister, who was still in high school at the time, decided to have a girl's night with my mom. So I can't remember where my dad and I went out to dinner. It was probably a local burger place called El Cat's. It's a local haunt, hole-in-the-wall kind of place. And we took our time got root beers and caught up and just relaxed. And by the time we were done, it was dark outside. 
So my dad drove us back home, and we turn into the circle of the community, the little community where my parents' house is that surrounds a lake. And we notice something very different about the neighborhood. When we left, it was just quiet. But when we came back, there were cars parked both directions all the way down the road all the way around the circle. And I looked over at my dad who had this confused and slightly horrified look on his face. Because as we parked the car way down the road and walked up, we noticed that there were kids going back and forth up the street with red solo cups. And my parents' front door was wide open. And there was music blaring. So we go into the house and people are pushing past us and hitting our shoulders like we're on some busy boulevard in South Beach or Manhattan. The formal living room where nobody formally does anything because it's a formal living room and you don't sit there. People were sitting everywhere. And we had no clue who they were. So we go into the kitchen and we find my mom kind of dazed but happy. My mom loves having parties and everybody was so nice. She allowed my sister to invite a couple friends over. But it seems to have gotten a little out of hand. I looked over at my dad and what my dad could see through the lens of his perpetual lawyer eyes was not a sea of fun but an ocean of liability. (laughs) And this had to stop. So we went over to the sound system, which had never blared that loud in the 20 years that my parents have owned it, and he kicked it off, and he and I had to walk throughout the house and scream in the most commanding, deep, billowing voices that the party was over, and everyone had to go because the cops had just been called, and you need to leave now. It's amazing how quick people can run in a moment. And as we were cleaning up, I remember looking over at my sister and not feeling angry, but frankly, pretty impressed because she took in two hours a quiet provincial home and turned it into like a European nightclub. I mean, that takes some serious skill. I don't know if she knew everybody, but I certainly had never had as many friends as the people that were in our house that night. And I got it. Because after being away from home for a year and understanding that she was functionally an only child, in a house with double the attention from parents who were struggling with half of an empty nest, She just wanted to have fun. She just wanted to get out from my parents' rules. She just wanted what all of us want. Just a little freedom. In the passage that we just heard, Moses is like a parental figure showing up to a house party in his own home that wasn't supposed to be going on. These teenage in faith Israelites had thrown a huge party while he was on a business trip with God. He was coming home with a special gift that he picked up for his kids. These tablets, these messages that he picked up in the duty-free side of the airport. And they were directly from God. And as he's pulling into the neighborhood, his assistant hears something that sounds like a street brawl. But Moses rolls down the window and says, no, that's not a fight. That is the sound of a party. So he parks his car and he runs into the house and everyone is dancing and juggling solo cups and gobbling food and singing and swaying to the song in my imagine staying alive and Moses face turns beet red and he takes the gift that he spent 40 days buying and he shatters it into a hundred hundred pieces He tightens his fists, he finds a baseball bat in the garage, and he 
cranks out the sound system. He beats it into silence. And everyone is frozen. He kicks everyone out of the house, tells them the cops are coming, he's going to call their parents, and then he makes the Israelites pay for it. To them, it was an innocent party. It was a good time blowing off some steam. There's no harm in it. But to Moses, they were playing with something way more dangerous than fire. Something similar happened to us just actually a few days ago. It's no secret to say that this was not a week from heaven for us as a country. And in all of the ups and downs that occurred, there were a group of people that got together to blow off some steam, to have a good time in a rose garden. They were celebrating that the president had nominated someone to the Supreme Court. And they just wanted for a moment to put down the rules, to put down all of the intensity, to just be together as friends. Now, we know each other well enough to where we can go to these uncomfortable places and know that we're not going to get hurt and not divide each other. Because there's something that happened there that suspending politics and the obvious ironies of it We all crave a moment to just take a break from all this. And probably in little and large ways, we've all broken or at least bent the rules on occasion. We just want to be free. We want to be free of these face masks for seven months. You go into the grocery store and you forget to put it on because even though it's been seven months, you've been living without a mask for 52 years. You want to be free from people telling you what to do and from social distancing and just hug somebody because we need that. God created us to need physical touch. Not washing our hands after gassing up at the tank doesn't feel like that big of a deal. In some ways, it wasn't on purpose, and in some ways, it's been intentional. Because in little and large ways, it's just been too much, and it's harmless. We can cut harmless corners on occasion because we just want to be free. That word packs a lot of punch in our culture. Freedom. As Americans, that's like the whole ballpark, right? Freedom for us is almost though kind of like this atmospheric term like love or like God. It's just this thing that we've been pushing around the world for over 200 years. It's this thing that we are trying to shoot for. It's even in the Bible. The Bible is full of phrases like in Ephesians 4, Christ died to set the captives free. It's a part of our faith. It's who we are. But by these voices, we understand from this that freedom is a way of living from something. We are free from the British. We're free from slavery. We're free from discrimination. We're free from bigotry. We're free from everything. That is our understanding of freedom. We want to be free from our budget and just go out to dinner on occasion and not have to worry about dollars and cents. You want to be free from your calendar for just a moment and go to church and put down the iPhone. You want to be free from the stress of COVID. When you get home, what do you do? You take your mask off also because it's safe. We want to be free from everything even sin. But that definition of freedom actually isn't the whole definition. If you look all throughout Scripture, in every verse, I actually did this because I was kind of curious, in every place where the words freedom or free are placed, you will see not just the American version, but something else. 
Because if you think that freedom is just in negative terms by what you don't want, what you're not about, we will miss the whole point altogether. God didn't send Moses to Egypt just to free the people. He sent Moses to Egypt for a purpose. He made a promise to give them a future and a home. God wanted them to grow and to transform into what he called a kingdom of priests. To be a beacon of hope for the world. Because freedom without purpose, without a calling, salvation without a vocation becomes chaos. That inevitably is centered around ourselves. If we are just free from. If we constantly define ourselves by what we're against, we will never realize what we're actually for. And in the mess of COVID, in the political, and even in our families, in our homes, the the culture war of all of the things that's going on right now, we've gotten into a rut of defining who we are by what we're not. We say we're against violent protests and bigotry, inequality, you name it. But if that's all that we are about, freedom from, then in the end we have abused freedom to being selfish and to justify our own worldview. And that is not what God has in store. That is not what Jesus redeemed us for. I was watching a documentary this past week. It's called The Last Dance. Has anybody heard or seen of this? It's about Michael Jordan and his career in basketball. And I grew up in the 90s, but I just heard of names like Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman and Scottie Pippen. I mean, these were cultural icons, not just basketball players. And in one of the episodes, I think it was episode five, they talked about the fact that there was a guy who was running a civil rights platform in a Senate race. And Michael Jordan was asked to endorse him. And he didn't. One of the things that they said made Michael Jordan the big hero, the big cultural icon that he still is, is because he didn't ruffle a whole lot of feathers. He didn't want to wade into politics or any of that stuff, which is understandable. But there was a huge, huge backlash. A massive push against him. As a man of color, as a man of the African-American community, and this individual of his same community was running on equality and running against somebody who was blatantly racist blatantly still for the segregation of schools in the 90s. And there was this one newsletter article that they posted on the screen. And the title was, What Are You For? What are you for? What are you about? And I think this passage is asking the same question. If we go to this church because we don't want to go to other churches, that's not enough. If you're friends with someone because you're not friends with someone else, that's not a good reason. If you started dating someone because your first round pick dumped you online, that's not enough. If you vote for someone because you don't want the other person, that's not freedom. Scripture shows us that we have been freed for a purpose, a calling, a whole life that is not based on where we were, but where we are going. We are called to be, as the Apostle Paul describes it in his letter, the, probably the greatest personality profile of a Christian, of God himself. He says a person who is patient, kind, 
not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, who doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. A person who is free to bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things for others. For Christ. Jesus tells us the greatest form of love, the highest, the truest form of freedom is to not live for someone else and to be free from that to just live for yourself. The greatest form of love is sacrificial. To live for others. For Christ. That's real, holistic freedom. If you were to paint a picture on it, it's the difference between partying like there's no tomorrow and celebrating because you have eternity. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take a moment. And not rush toward another thought, toward the next part of the worship service. This is the maybe one place where you don't have to perform. You just have the gift to be. So allow yourselves to be held wherever the Holy Spirit has got you right now. Allow yourself to be free to receive the word that God has sent to you through a broken person, through a sinner just like you. Allow yourself a moment to taste and see a particular goodness that God has been preparing for you to receive. And as you do so, for those who are joining us at home, we have a prayer prompt. It sometimes helps us as we meditate and reflect on what God has been doing in our lives. And the one this week is this. Knowing yourself the way that you do, but no one else can, what do you sense is one purpose, one calling, one reason for why Jesus redeemed you. Take a moment. Just be with God. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you've got freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice, the same, old, same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel low Got you.
taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got chains He's a chain breaker If you got chains He's a chain breaker Thanks, man. We talk a lot about being a family. And that's not just a nice tagline to get young parents to come to our church. That's part of our calling. That's part of what we have been freed for, to be for each other. And so this morning, as we come to God in worship We come to him with hearts and minds that are receptive and open to what he has to say. We also come knowing that gratitude is not something that naturally bubbles up in our hearts. It's a discipline. It's a habit. It's a practice. And we practice that here in many ways as a family. And one of the ways that we do that is through the giving of tithes and offerings online. We're not passing around a plate or anything like that because we're trying to keep each other safe and to love each other that way. There's an offering plate in the narthex. You can also give easily online. But one of the ways that we devote ourselves to God through tithes and offerings is giving to him first a tithe of soul, of someone that he has freed us to love and to be grateful for. And this morning, uh, we are going to acknowledge four people who have been working very silently in the background to help this church be really healthy, to maintain strong, wonderful, abundant relationships with its staff members. There is the personnel committee. It's Tony Bloomkey and Stan Cox. It is Cheryl Roberson, and it is Steve Miller. And these incredible people have been praying and discerning and loving on our staff as we are looking towards what God has freed us for in 2021 and being grateful for all that he has done in 2020. So can we thank God for the amazing ministry of these people and all that they do for this church? Thank you very much. Let us pray. God, we love you. Sometimes it's touchy-feely and warm, and other times it feels more like a rainy, cold concept. But in the realm beyond feelings, we know that we do, because we still have words to say it. We still have a roof over our heads. We have these incredible people that we have the privilege to love and serve and receive love and service from. We have the opportunity to be people of compassion, of grace, of hospitality in a world, in a society, in a community that is really struggling for that middle ground. And Lord, as we look out over the landscape of our lives, all we can say is thank you. Thank you for all that you have done in our lives. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for speaking to us this morning, for giving us this holy place to come and be renewed and rejuvenated by you. And we give to you these tithes and offerings of gratitude, not only for those who have served us and freed us to serve you who are on the personnel committee, but for this church, for your world, for you. We give to you these tithes and offerings, and we can only do so by standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before us, who have taught us and have brought us to this place, who've shown us what faith really is. So this morning, we recommit ourselves to you now by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning we have a special gift. A gift that comes to us not just once a month, but as soon as your eyes open every morning. These means of grace in the sacrament of Holy Communion that remind us where our heartbeat comes from, where our lives are rooted, where our friends, where our careers, where all the blessings that we see and don't see come from, the grace and the goodness of God. So let us enter into this holy moment through saying a prayer. The Lord be with you. Would you lift up your hearts? Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Eternal God, you are holy and mighty. It's true and it's right that you are our greatest joy and we thank and praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you wherever your glory abides. We thank you for forming us in your wisdom and creating all things by your power. You set us to be a family on this earth and to live in a community of faith. We praise you on this World Communion Sunday. That as we have as a community of humanity suffered much during COVID, on this day, as your kingdom of priests, we celebrate all across your holy world that there is another chapter to the story. And so we praise you for the good gifts of bread and juice that you prepare for us. For the table that you spread in the world as a sign for the love that you have for all people, not just us. For freeing us to be a beacon of hope and acceptance and transformation in our lives, in our families, in our friends, in our communities. So we join with all of the voices around the world right now, this day, to give you thanks and praise by saying... Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. You are actually holy, O God of majesty. And blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, who is our Lord. You sent your only begotten in whom all of you was present to be for us the way and the truth and the life. In Jesus, you taught us who you are. You healed us who believed in you. You received in us those who needed burdens to be lifted. We glorify you for your great power and the love at work in Christ. And by the baptism of his death, his suffering, and his resurrection, You gave birth to a new creation and delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. And so we say as a new people, by water and by spirit, praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. On the night that Jesus was actually betrayed by his best friends. He was having dinner with them and he knew what was about to happen, but they didn't. And even still, he built a table of grace in the midst of the darkest night in all creation. And he took a piece of bread and he broke it. And he gave it to these people who would stab him in the back very soon. And he said, take, 
eat this. This bread is my body broken for you. And in a similar way, after dinner, he took a cup of wine and he poured it and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you, and remember me. The Apostle Paul reminds us that every time we get to eat this bread and we have the honor of drinking of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death until he comes again and he will. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Amen. I invite you who are joining us from home, if you have a piece of bread, piece of toast, to get it out. And for those of you who are joining us together in what looks like a coffee creamer cup, it is not. It is the grace of God. There is a tiny film that you can tear on the top, and there is a piece of Holy Host. The body of Christ broken for you. In the same way, church family at home, we're so glad you're joining us today. Get a cup of juice and tear it and pour it. For those of you who are with us, there is one more sleeve to tear. The blood of Christ shed for you. Heavenly Father, as you have drawn near to us in word, in silence, in song, in the comfort of home, in the taste of the extraordinary ordinary, we thank you for your grace, which is not a concept even though we've given a lot of ink to it. It's a reality. It's an experience of being about more than someone else's idea of who we should be and being free from the slavery of having to be good enough for ourselves. It's living for you and you alone. So take these gifts of bread and juice and pour them not just into our bodies, but into the deepest recesses of our souls. Let us, as we open our eyes from this prayer, feel rejuvenated, feel freer, lighter under the yoke of your love to go from this place and to be for you, to be about your people, to see every person not as a stranger, but as a sister under your love. Thank you for rejuvenating, for renovating, for transforming us this morning. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. So as we continue our worship, we have the opportunity to not just be passive recipients of the grace of God in a sermon or in the sacrament of communion, but to be active participants in it through the giving of prayers. And so normally we pass around a microphone. We're not going to do that this morning because we're trying to keep each other safe. So what we'll do is I'll invite you to gently raise your hand and I will come and hear your prayer request, whether it's a prayer of joy or concern, anything in between. It's all fair game. And I will come back here so that all of us in body and in spirit who are together today can pray that together. So what prayers of joy concern anything on your hearts that we need to lift before God 
in one another this morning. Cheryl, I'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much. Our sister, sister Cheryl McArath shared a joy that uh, Ivy Wefflin, the daughter of our uh, recently departed sister Brenda Wefflin, um, is going to get to bring her baby home today, who was born uh, three weeks ago and uh, has been in the hospital recovering and getting strong and nice and fat. Baby gets to go home to be with mom, so we celebrate that. And also a prayer of concern for all of those in our country, the 200,000 plus people that have succumbed to COVID and, and the many, many more who are struggling with it right now. And in particular for our leaders, many, many of which, not just our president and first lady, but throughout all systems of government and in different forms of leadership in the private and public sector have contracted this horrible virus. God, we lift to you our wonderful sister Ivy Wefflin. We thank you for giving her this beautiful baby that she gets to take home today. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of new life. And so many dark moments that we've experienced, you shine your brightness, sometimes in the deepest way possible is in the face of a child. And so we thank you, Lord, that both Ivy and baby are safe and going to be home together. And Lord, we lift to you those communities that are struggling in the wake and the aftermath of those who have succumbed to COVID. And we lift to you those who are still struggling with it in the after effects weeks after they have tested negative for it, still being symptomatic. And in particular for our leaders in all aspects of life that have succumbed and have, are currently struggling right now with the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, Cheryl. Any other prayer requests? Yes, Linda. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Yes, thank you so much for that, Linda. Absolutely. So... Our sister, Linda Beard, shared with us um, a prayer request for um, Sharon and Charlie Barnard. Sharon is not feeling good today, and Charlie was actually in the hospital this week um, because he had some kidney stones to pass, which is incredibly <coughs> uncomfortable and painful. Lord, we lift to you our sister and brother, Sharon and Charlie Barnard. Please, Lord, give them rest today. In the pitter-patter of rain and the sunshine, hopefully, to come, Lord, grant them peace as their bodies recover. Thank you for the miracles you spread all over the place through the modern medicines that we get to enjoy in this country. And please leverage that, Lord, and your Holy Spirit to heal and renew both of them to full health. Lord, we lift to you, our sister and brother, now this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayers. Any other prayer requests? Yes, Judy, be back. Yes, man. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Judy. We absolutely need to pray for that. So our sister Judy Verostic shared um, a prayer request for our sister Linda Beard who has been in a lot of pain um, and is struggling with some broken bones and needing to recover and, and needing help to walk after a, a fall, I believe. Lifting, lifting, absolutely, and, and back issues and just healing. Lord, we ask that you would surround our sister Linda with your Holy Spirit. Pour your grace and your healing love into her Use a masseuse, use a chiropractor, whatever you got to do, Lord, to pour restoration into her body, that she would be pain-free soon and restored to the wonderful life that you've given her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
God, we give to you these multitude of prayers and those unspoken. We ask you would be with all of the communities in more than 10 states in this country that are struggling from the ravages of wildfires. We ask that you would be with our children locally and abroad in schools that have shut down due to cases of COVID. Be with our parents, God, who are carrying a Herculean amount of weight on their shoulders as now teachers, as as full-time parents with kids at home all the time. Lord, please give them rest. Give them relaxation. Give them a breather, just a moment of silence to be restored in you. We lift you all these prayers with the words that you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go. May the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, now and forever. Amen. I will uh, give you your leave wedding style, come to you and give you an opportunity to take your leave. Be safe, be well, and be rested. Amen. How firm.